Blessed day everyone. Welcome to our uh, daily devotions. And I'm hoping that you're all doing well as I'm recording this. It's it's 2.38 a.m. Monday morning. And so I'm praising the Lord na hindi tayo masyadong naapektuhan ng typhoon na dumaan. But we know that there are those who are devastated by the typhoon. And so let's keep on praying for them. Again, hindi natin masyad naramdaman yung, yung typhoon but I, I'm praying that you would continue on being safe and uh, be indoors and just enjoy the holiday kasi alam ko walang pasok ngayon, right? And so, um, we're going back to this beautiful chapter in Isaiah, chapter 40. And we said that this chapter is speaking about comfort. And this is not just any ordinary comfort that we um, are used to um, bilang mga tao. It's beyond that because comfort according to Isaiah, according to God, is found in the forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of your sins. And we, we said, we, we saw how this is pointing to the one who can forgive sins. It's pointing to Christ as early as now in the book of Isaiah. It's uh, pointing to Jesus Christ as the only one who can save. At nakita rin po natin sa ating progression ng pag, pag-aaral nito that it is only found such uh, such comfort is only found in the word of God. And in pinakita sa atin ng Panginoon Diyos kung bakit dapat natin pagtiwalaan siya. Bakit ang comfort na kanyang ibinibigay ay dapat nating yakapin. Remember the context. The nation Israel um found comfort so to speak sa neighboring countries nila pinagtiwalaan nila sila imbis na pagtiwalaan ng Panginoon Diyos and so God used the same nations to to uh, um, chastise them para sila turuan ng leksyon 70 years of captivity but God is saying no tapos na may limit yon comfort comfort my people speak tenderly to my to Jerusalem right that, and tell her that her sins are forgiven in the last few sections especially nung last uh, few days ng last week nakita natin kung paano sinabi ng Panginoon Diyos through this prophet na dapat niyo ako pagtiwalaan because I, I am great right and, and we've seen that starting from verse 12 nakita natin na sabi ng Panginoon Diyos I am great because I alone am creator siya lang ang tagapaglikha and he goes on to say um, you can trust me because I alone am incomparable wala, wala siyang kaparis you cannot compare him to anyone else as we continue on in verses 18 to 20 we would see God is great because he is the only God and we see this through a question that he would ask Look at verse 18. Having said that he is creator, he is incomparable, to whom then, verse 18, will you liken God? Or what likeness compare with him? Ngayon, mga kaibigan, if one does not worship the, the true God, he is an idolater. Kahit na ganwa kasinsero. And minsan at in, lagi actually sa panahon natin ngayon sinasabi na marami as long as you're sincere well you can be sincere and you can be sincerely wrong it's either you worship the true God or you shape and fashion some God that you worship that's the point there minsan we replace God with other gods that, that's what we see here to whom then will you liken God or what likeness compare with him verse 19 an idol just Diyos ang daw po a craftsman casts it and a goldsmith overlays it with gold and, and, and casts it for its silver chains itong sinabi ng, ng, ng talatang ito sa verse 19 ito yung idol ito yung paga, pa, pagan idol maling Diyos Diyosan ng isang mayamang tao. Ga, gawa raw sa ginto, gawa sa, sa, tans, ah, sa, sa pilak, right? Pero alam natin, hindi lahat kayang mag-afford ng gintong uh, Diyos Diyosan. Kaya nakit natin sa verse 20, 
he he who is to empower sa, sa mga may hirap naman for an offering to his wood that will not rot kahoy naman daw pero syempre ang, ang sinasabing ganun dito ang picture is kahit na kahoy ito pipiliin mo yung hindi nabubulok y- y- hindi mo gusto ang ang just just ang just mo ay nabubulok right again we have those in our mates, maybe in our lives, who, who claim to not be worshipping idols, but they do. If you take care of the idol, if you offer flowers and, and light candles on it, it it's worship. Sabi ng, ni, ni, ng, ng Panginoon Diyos at sa, sabi ng talatang ito, well, well kailan mo kumpara? Sinabi niya, ako lang ang creator, ako lang, hindi mo ako pwede ihentol sa iba. So ngayon, kaya mo ako kumpara. Ako lang ang Diyos. Uh, um, sa idol, yung, yung nililo, yung sa mga mga yaman na may gawa sa ginto, gawa sa pilak, o sa mga may hirap naman, na gawa naman sa kahoy, pinipili pa nga ninyo na hindi nabubulok, right? You don't want your idol to be rotting. Sabi sa verse 20, He who is to empower yung mga mahirap, for an offering chooses wood that will not rot. He seeks out a skillful scra- craftsman to set up an idol that will not move. Siyempre, ayaw mo na mababagsak ang idol. You want that idol to be uh, staying still. Siyempre, ayaw mo mababagsak. You don't want to be falling over. Ang point dito is this. False gods are human inventions. At ito, kung ayaw natin uh, ayaw man namin natin tanggapin is inspired by Satan himself. We fashion and make them and make sure that they don't keep falling over. God is great because He alone is God. There's no one else. Hindi, niya, hindi natin siya pwedeng ikumpara sa mga diyos Now, in verse 21, we see a, a declaration about God that He is sovereign. Do you not know? Do you not hear? Uh, uh, has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? Again, here we have a series of rhetorical questions. Nagsimula siya, uh, di ba? Uh, kaya mo kumpara sa Diyos Diyosan? Diyos Diyosan ng mga mayaman? Diyos Diyosan ng mga mahirap? Di, di, hindi niyo ba alam? Di niyo narinig? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? Ito'y parang equivalent ng Romans chapter 1. Of course, y- you know, ito ay diniklara ng salita ng Diyos. At kung na-miss nyo yung, y- yung uh, um, mensahe, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. It's in God's word. Y- you look at it, sabi niya, have you, have you not heard? Has it not been told you from the beginning? Everyone from the foundations of the earth, the text says, that is the beginning of human history, knows that there is one creator. Alam natin yan. And he rules over the people. Meron tayong konsepto ng Diyos na manilika. Kaya tayo na akira sa tunay na manilika, we have the, this uh, um, responsibility to share that with others. Namari ang pananaw. It is He who sits above the circle of the earth. Right? Umpisa umpisa pa lamang. Sinasabi ng Diyos, very subtly, ang earth hindi siya flat. Bilog daw po, according to science, no? According to God's word. And its inhabitants are like grasshoppers who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in. Ang point po ng verse 22 is that God sits enthroned above the earth and He rules all of its people. Ang picture dito ay, ay picture ng ancient times kasi noong unang panahon po, ang mga hari, ang kanilang podium or kanyang, kung saan naka, nakalaga, nakalaga o nakalagay yung kanilang trono, dapat mas mataas sa mga tao, dapat naka-elevate dalawang bagay, una na para makita siya at tingalain, tingalain siya ng mga tao at pangalawa, for, for him to look down on his people to po- prove a point that he is sovereign over them ano sabi rito? 
ang Diyos na mas mataas pa, mas mataas pa nga sa sa ano? Sa la, sa, sa himpabawid. Ang trono niya nakaupo daw siya. That's the picture. Sa isa sa above here to speak that he is sovereign at sa kanyang vantage point titingalain natin siya sa, sa vantage point niya tayo daw mga para mga kulisa lamang right and compared to his greatness tayo mga parang kulisa lang and, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers and stretches out the heavens like a curtain and spreads them like a tent to dwell in ang sabi ngayon si, simply put sabi ngayon yung, yung napakalawak na langit daw para lang siyang agyo na nanggagamba na parang ang dali niyang tanggal-tanggalin napakalaki ng Diyos he, he is great because you can't compare him with anyone right siya lamang ang Diyos but not only is he the ruler of the earth he also rules earth leaders sabi sa verse 23 who brings princes to nothing and makes the rulers of the earth as emptiness. Sabi dito, ang Diyos ang nagde-decide kung sino magro-rule, when they will rule, and up to how long or when up to how long will they rule. Siya ang sovereign. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth when he blows on them and they wither. And the tempest carries them off like stubble. From God's vantage point, even the long-lasting king, kamamatay lang po nung queen, iba ang tagal niya nag-rule. Well, sa vantage point ng Diyos, kahit gano'ng katagal nag-rule, sanday lang yan, parang, you're here today, you're gone tomorrow. Ang Diyos ang nag-raise ng sino man, sa kanyang kaparaanan, sa kanyang kagustuhan. God is sovereign over human history. Verse 25, To whom then will you compare me? That I should be like him, says the Holy One. So, inulit na naman yung tanong niya kayo sa verse 18. Right? Kayo niyo, kayo niyo ako kumpara. Ako, ako lamang ang Diyos. No earthly ruler, even the greatest, even the longest uh, re- lasting, ruler, hindi natin siya pwedeng ikumpara sa Diyos. Even the, 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 those who we believe, sana siya dapat anala, siya ang perfect fit eh. Again, this is going against our own feeble political preferences. Pangunahan pa natin ng Diyos, He is sovereign. Napansin niyo kung paano siya pinatungkulan dito to whom kaya niyo ako kumpara will you compare me that I should be like him says the holy one we cannot put our confidence on any human ruler put your trust on God he is sovereign he is great he is holy verse 26 God's rule extends the entire universe in the ancient days, and I guess still today, iba, marami na niniwala na yung stars, ginagayad tayo. Isaiah says, that is absurd. Yahweh is the one who created the stars, rules them, and preserves them. Lift up your eyes, tumingi la ka, and see who created these, itong mga, mga, mga bituin na to. He who brings them out, their ho- uh, he who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name. Ang idea po dyan, mga kapatid, ang Diyos ay in control sa anumang dapat mangyari sa stars. And He calls them by name para mga alaga niya, mga aso, pinapangalanan niya, ganun ba karami ang stars? And simply put, sabi ng Panginoon, no, no. 400 billion stars? 100 billion stars still, still undiscovered? Or galaxies undiscovered? God created them, carries them out, kung ano mangyari sa kanya, sa kanila, and they call them by name. Para mga pets. God preserves them, it survives as long as He is determined, and it dies only when He decides for it to die. 
God is sovereign. God alone is God. He is creator. He is incomparable. He is God. He is sovereign. He is in control. And you can take comfort in that. Na ano man nangyayari sa buhay mo, hindi siya nag, nagkamali. Hindi siya nagpabaya. Right? Now, sabi ng ilan, nakaka-fascinate yan. Yes, uh, yung, yung katuhanan, yung theology, yung doctrine. Well, but I have problems, Pastor. Again, we are in, in the pandemic. May bagyong dumadaan ngayon sa atin. And maraming pang uncertainties na tayong kakaharapin. So, practical application, walang mas practical pa dito. Wala nang mas practical pa dito. ipinakita sa atin ng Diyos kung bakit dapat natin siyang pagkatiwalaan. Kung bakit tunay ang comfort na ipinagkakaloob niya dahil wala tayong ibang pwedeng puntahan kasi walang Diyos kundi siya lamang. He is creator. He is sovereign. He, you cannot compare Him with anyone. He alone rules everything, the nations, the stars, the universe, and lahat din ng affairs ng tao. Hindi siya nagkakamali mga kapatid. Imagine nyo, kailang-kailangan marunig yan ng Israel yun. Nung panahon na ito'y ipin, ipinahayag sa kanila. Sapagat sila ay nagtadalawang isip, nagtataka, bakit kaya mukhang napabayaan tayo ng Diyos eh. Mukhang nagkamali yata ang Diyos eh. Kayo, maaaring may kaisipan kayong ganito. Ano man po ang inyong pinagdaanan. But take heart, dear ones. God is in control because God is God and He alone is great. You can trust Him. You can trust His Word. You can trust that indeed He can bring you comfort. Right? Maraming salamat sa Panginoon Diyos sa Kanyang pagtuturo sa ating ngayon. Tomorrow, we'll be continuing this uh, beautiful section. But for now, let's pray. Lord, we thank You for teaching us today. We praise You for who You are as You have presented in Your Word. Kailang-kailangan namin maalala ito, Panginoon Diyos. kailang kailan namin paalalahanan ng mga tunay na katotohanan ng ito Panginoon. And we pray that indeed this is comforting na kayo ay Diyos mapagkakatiwalaan, malakas, makapangyarihan sa lahat. Walang pagkakataon na hindi ka po in control and you're sovereign in everything that we go through, everything that we're we're in right now. I it's either you orchestrate it or you allow it. para po mas mapalapit kami sa inyo, para mas maunawaan namin kung sino kayo sa buhay namin. At para matunghayan namin, ang comfort na ino-offer nyo, hindi po panandalian lamang. And so we pray that you would use this devotion for us to grow deeper in, 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 in the understanding of uh, your sovereignty, your greatness, at uh, magkaroon kami ng comfort doon. Lord. Salamat sa pagpoprotect nyo sa amin. Ngayong araw nito, we pray for those who are being devastated by the typhoon. Kindly be with them and provide, preserve, and protect them. Salamat po muli sa pangalan mo, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everyone. And uh, I hope you stay safe. God bless you. See you tomorrow.